Hi, I'm Judy Tayabdi. Thank you very much for joining us today. And today, when we do our subject, you'll notice that I'll try not to be gender specific when we're dealing with children and access. Today, we're going under the heading of justice. As you know, we've talked about family rights in the past. We've talked about street violence. In fact, we'll be looking at that issue again on Thursday. And we've also dealt with justice expired. Today we're looking at Christmas access, and it's from the point of view of family members who'd like to be able to access children who are relatives of theirs during a very special time of year, certainly a time of year when many of us think that family becomes the most important part of this season. And as you know, we actually, when we first launched the show in the spring, we dealt with a number of problems with divorce acts and family relations law, but we want to return to it and show you just a few of the developments since then. But first, let's provide this background look. I want to stay with my Nona like others. Last spring, many British Columbians began protesting our province's laws on family rights, and they marched on the B.C. legislature. Many are grandparents wanting access or custody to their grandchildren after divorces, separations, or interventions by social services. When children are adopted, the uh, blood family then no, holds, has no status anymore. My son is dead now, and I am very much against ever losing my son's only child, my granddaughter. The ministry took her, and they're putting her up for adoption, and I have been cut. Um, I have one more visit, maybe. There are four million children under the care of grandparents in North America because the parents aren't fit caregivers. But the Children's and Families Ministry has guidelines which say the ministry must make it a priority to place children with relatives or with an Aboriginal band if the child is Aboriginal or has any Aboriginal background. So in theory, all decisions on children are made based on the best interests of the child. But what this is, is open to interpretation by judges, social workers and counsellors. Some grandparents say their experience with the ministry responsible for children in care makes them question if the interests of the child are being met as the grandparents are frequently shut out. For the last Robert Metzger is the chief judge for the province of British Columbia and is one of the people responsible for the current justice system for family law. And he had this comment. Uh, the people pay for this justice system and they should criticize it if there's something they don't like about it. And they can do that through the media or through letters or however they want. Uh, we're all listening. We're all looking for ideas. We shall Often it is the non-custodial parents who find themselves wondering whether or not they will see their children at all over Christmas. There are cases where court order follows court order, allowing for access, but if the custodial parent does not follow the order, there's no method of forcing the issue. And Czech TV reported on this last year. She's a custodial parent. She has the ultimate say, and there's nothing I can do about that. I've never missed any child support payments. I've made every one. I try to send them gifts. I don't know if they're getting them on their birthdays and the last two Christmases. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't hear from them at all. As difficult as this may be for the adults, it is most difficult on the children. We'll be taking your calls on Christmas access to this number after the break. What do you get with Amigo Digital? Every month you get 100 anytime minutes and 100 first incoming minutes free. Yeah, I'm free. You get call display. Staying in touch doesn't mean staying in. And oh yeah, there's no long-term contract. I call the shots. And you get it all for just $19.95 a month. Amigo Digital. It goes with you. It's Tony's Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tony! Happy birthday to you! Best wishes, my friend! Happy birthday, dear Tony! We love you, man! Happy birthday to you! Now you can celebrate with the Tony the Tiger plush toy. To get yours, see details on these birthday edition boxes. Tony, we think you're great! When should you plant geranium cuttings? What's the only time of year to safely move peonies? How long can live Christmas trees remain indoors? 
Get answers to these and other questions by ordering the Get Up and Grow Gardening Guide in Calendar for 1998. Gord Nickel, host of the Get Up and Grow TV show, has compiled over 360 useful tips to help novices and green thumbs alike succeed in the garden. All of this timely information has been combined with rich botanical illustrations to give you an invaluable resource. Hi, I'm Gord Nickel, host of Get Up and Grow, seen every Saturday morning on Check TV. Order the Get Up and Grow Gardening Guide and Calendar now and you'll receive a Forget-Me-Not seed package at no extra cost. To order your Gardening Guide and Calendar, send $12.99 plus $2 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Or call 1-888-456-5577 and have your credit card handy. The guide is also available at Canner Nursery in Victoria, Abbotsford and Chilliwack. Call now and get growing in 1998. At Christmas time, many people are thinking first and foremost about their families, but there are parents and grandparents who are not going to have access to their children over the Christmas period. Why is the system so difficult to crack? We have with us two guests today in studio and one by phone. And we have Larry Gilbert, a local lawyer. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. And Ken Weeb is with Fathers for Equality, but we'll also be addressing the whole idea of non-custodial parents. Thanks for joining us, too. Thank you. And in a few minutes, we'll also introduce you to Jay Hill. He's the MP for Prince George Peace River, and he's introduced a private member's bill that's looking for some amendments to the Divorce Act. But first, uh, Larry, I want to talk to you about this. Uh, I guess I have to say, why are simple requests sometimes so difficult? Uh, if, you, if you've never been involved in this, it might be hard to understand why a grandparent, for example, if a child's in the care of the government, why can't they have access? Or if you're a non-custodial parent, you have an access order, why can't you get that fulfilled? Well, with, with respect to a child who has uh, been taken into custody by the ministry, uh, it used to be referred to as an apprehension and now uh, the children are being taken in, into custody. With respect to a child in that circumstance, there is an, an incredible problem with respect to the non-custodial parent or uh, the case of a grandparent because the ministry holds all the cards. Right. It, it's very difficult for an individual like a grandparent because they have to make an application to the ministry, directly to the, to the ministry. In fact, the Act, the Child, Family and Community Service Act, does not provide the court with the power to make an access order until a continuing care order is made. So what you're saying is it gets hung up in the ministry system, which we know is overloaded, and so they, they first have to get the ministry to act and then go to the courts, which is also overloaded. Right. And yeah. what it means essentially is the ministry has a discretion right. on whether or not to grant access to a grandparent. And often what happens is that they'll, they'll do an assessment of the grandparent's ability to care for the child and to provide some guidance to the child. And often what happens is they'll allow access on, on a supervised basis. Right, so it's all conditional. Exactly. And, and you have and to have a supervisor who gets cleared and it's a very... And very, very, very often there's absolutely no reason for the supervision. Right, except it, that the ministry wants to cover their legal exactly. barriers. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, I want to bring Ken into this. Um, what do you see as some of the biggest obstacles to uh, relatives who want access over Christmas? Well, in order for relatives to have access, they have to be the relatives of the custodial parent, essentially, or they're kind of dependent on the non-custodial parent being able to have a visit over the Christmas holiday. So you're counting on some goodwill, I guess. Well, there's a certain amount of goodwill. There, there, there are custody or access orders where you do have certain guarantees of visitation over holidays. The problem is that they're, they're extremely difficult to enforce, and if they don't happen, you have little or no recourse. Um, you can't call the police. Well, you could, but it doesn't do any good. They, yeah. they won't get involved with this type of thing. Out of their jurisdiction. No. Yeah. Okay, so that's one of those things. Now, we're going to bring on, uh, um, actually, now I think we're going to give you a little bit of a background on this, because there's not only uh, Father's Rights Groups who are trying to get the law changed, but there actually is also a federal MP. Uh, he's with the Reform Party. He's from Prince George Peace River, and he's He's put a private member's bill forward, and all that means is he wants to have a debate. A private member is not a member of government. Let's give you a bit of a background on this issue then. Fathers groups across the country are disappointed with the new Divorce Act, which we told you about in the spring. They wanted the law to recognize equal parenting, including joint custody and care and control of a child in most cases. They wanted mandatory mediation to settle divorce issues rather than lengthy court cases, 
and they say custody issues should only go to court when criminal action has taken place in relations between a parent and a child. Fathers groups also say that financial obligations from one parent to another should be removed in cases where there is equal and shared care of the children. And failing equal parenting, the costs of raising a child and the incomes of both parents, not just the non-custodial parent, should be taken uh, into account in child support awards, not currently the case. There is a new effort that could come before Parliament for debate soon. A private member's bill, as I mentioned, Bill C-285, says custody of children should always be joint custody unless, unless the courts hear that this would not be in the best interest of the child or the child has suffered abuse or mistreatment by one of the parents. The private member's bill calls for the principle that the child should have as much contact as possible with both parents and suggests that the custodial parent should be required to give 30 days notice before moving away with the child and must arrange future access for the non-custodial parent in the event of them moving away. I think that's an important issue as well. We're going to bring on now, we have Jay Hill here. Can you hear me, Jay? Yes, I can, Judy. Great. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Now, you've tabled this private member's bill. We've given a little bit of an idea. Um, how much hope do you have that you're going to have any impact on uh, the Divorce Act? Well, as you know, the history of private member's legislation isn't great at either the provincial or the federal level. Right. It's uh, sort of a lottery system. I introduced this bill, actually, uh, the first draft of this bill back in uh, March of 96 as Bill C-242 in the, in the last parliament. Okay. And I w <clears throat> before the, uh, the uh, parliament adjourned uh, for the election, I hadn't uh, been fortunate enough to have my name drawn, so this bill was never debated. So mm -hmm. I reintroduced it uh, last month. And uh, hopefully I'll be a little luckier uh, and have my name drawn so that we can debate this very important issue in, uh, in the House of Commons. Okay, now what kind of support do you have from other MPs? I think there's some pretty widespread uh, recognition of the issue on the part of um, members of Parliament from all parties. Right. I mean, even the, uh, the past uh, Justice Minister Alan Rock uh, back in March 96 when he brought forward his legislation that... Uh, uh, amended the uh, laws dealing with the tax exemption right. uh, for non-custodial parents and, and the standardization of child support rates across the nation and, and those types of amendments. I mean, right. He made a commitment at that time that uh, his government was working on the issue of custody and access right. and promised legislation, and yet uh, we haven't uh, heard much about it from the Liberal government since. So okay, uh, it's of great concern, I think, to a lot of people. If, uh, if people wanted to help make sure that, uh, that some of these issues were debated, they can contact you, I guess. Uh, right? Certainly. Uh, okay. I think that uh, any pressure that we can bring to uh, move the new Justice Minister, Anne McClellan, uh, would further this issue. I mean... I really bring it back that the focus has to be on the children. You know, there's a general yeah. assumption on the part of society that uh, as long as a marriage is intact, that, uh, you know, both parents uh, uh, need access to their children, and conversely, and more importantly, both the children need access to both parents. And yet what we see is that uh, when a divorce takes place, suddenly it's, uh, you know, it, it's an either-or situation. Right. And what this bill endeavors to do is level the playing field Okay. and ensure that the present rates, which are running at about 72% of the uh, court decisions, are in favor of the mother being the sole custodian, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that would change. And that, ex as, as you explained earlier in the program, Judy, that unless there was proven neglect or abuse or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, then it would always be a joint uh, custody arrangement. Okay, I have, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off there because we're running out of time in this segment, but we will let people know how you can contact Jay Hill if you would like to participate in this debate and this dialogue on changing the laws. And to support Bill C-285, it's debate. You can contact J. Hill MP, Prince George, Peace River, room 640C, Centre Block, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, and the postal code is K1AOA6. And also, if you'd like to write to the Minister of Justice because you have concerns about this or other bills, you can write to the Honourable Anne McClellan, the Federal <coughs> Minister of Justice. She's in the House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, and also k one a OA6. And we will be back with your calls, and uh, we had a lot of information to get through in the first segment, but we'll be taking your calls right after a quick break. Tiam She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. How can you give someone a taste of something this refreshing, this cool, this holiday season? Give a Brita water filter system. 
It's a really cool gift. This holiday from Eaton's. Discover the romantic fragrance L'Air du Temps and receive absolutely free this three-piece gift set. Exquisitely crafted in British Columbia. The fine grain Sitka spruce provided by Macmillan Modell, making the most of a renewable resource. Hey, don't switch that dial, because this is going to make you smile. See these warm, toasty sweaters for your family? At 30% off, put them under your tree. And comfy, cozy robes, all at 25% off now. And only at Eaton's. Wow! 30% off men's dress shirts and ties. There's Christian Dior, Arrow, and Hathaway in distinction for all you guys. And there's me, Mr. Magical Moose. <laughs> only $9.93. You could be a millionaire. Well, we're counting the days, not the days of Christmas, but the few days remaining till the first millionaire lottery draw. Do you have your ticket yet for a million dollars in cash, a million dollars in automobiles, and nearly a million in other prizes? Call us today, toll free throughout British Columbia. You could be a millionaire. The early bird draw is just a few days away. Call right now. Today we're talking about Christmas access. Our guests are Larry Gilbert, he's a family lawyer, and Ken Weeb is with the Fathers for Equality, trying to get some changes to the current Federal Divorce Act. We'll go straight to the phones, and uh, we'll start with Elaine, who's in Surrey, and you're with the Fair Justice Society. Yes, I am, uh, Judy. Hi, Elaine, go ahead. Uh, Judy, I have just come from the Social Services Department okay. in the complaints area of Surrey, where we're working on a child custody case. We have been attending court with a mother whose children were seized two months ago right. when she applied for a divorce from her husband. Okay. And what we are concluding from this case with many uh, people watching it is that the, the husband is using this to abuse the system and get even with his wife. And so when we're saying, now, how do we get this heard so the mother can even have access to her children at Christmas, even right. the grandmother wants access? Right. And they're saying, well, it has to go through the courts. There is no complaint you can make unless it goes before a judge. Well, we've all been going to court with the mother, and they can't get heard. They keep shuffling it, and the paperwork isn't done by the social services. It wasn't done on the day they took the kids. It wasn't in the computer when I arrived at court. And so I'm questioning the ethics of social services mm -hmm. in seizing these kids too quickly, mm -hmm. destroying their trust in adults. And now we have a two and four and six-year-old who are saying, one of them says, Mommy, they came in and they took me without putting any shoes or socks on me and my feet were so cold. And Mommy, why did you let them do that? Why right. did they do that to me? Mm, right. Okay, well, I uh, think you've raised some excellent points. Um, Larry, that's what you were sort of talking about, that first you have to go through the social services system, mm -hmm. or Child, Fam Child Family and Community mm -hmm. Services Act, and then the courts. Well, both of those are an absolute nightmare. I mean, how mm -hmm. many people are going through this right now? I don't have any st statistics, but the cases that I'm involved in, uh, it, it can be a very serious problem because the parent from whom the children have been taken uh, is often seeking answers as to, first of all, why the children are taken, mm -hmm. and secondly, why that parent can't see the children or spend time with them. As I mo mentioned a moment ago, it, the decision as to whether or not the parent will have access is within the discretion of the, w what we refer to as the director. So there's not really the a lot of accountability. Somebody you don't know who's taking the children and... Very little accountability. In, in fact, if, if you are, happen to be lucky enough to get into court, and, and to uh, address the issue of, of the apprehension or, or the issue of protection, you often find the courts to be unsympathetic 
to the concerns you have with the w conduct of the ministry in it. first of all apprehending the child right. and uh, secondly with uh, with respect to access they don't want to deal with that they don't want to deal right. with it they say they want to deal with the best interests of the children right but it seems to me that the best interests of the children is is, are t is to be with the parent and to have access to the parent particularly if there's no evidence and no proven evidence that the parent would harm the child right. and that's often often the case that there is no evidence that they could be harmed. No, the, the evidence are allegations made by social workers, sometimes by uh, other parents who may have a ve uh, revenge uh, interest. Right. Um, okay. And I think I'm sure Ken will have some comments on that too. But uh, we'll now talk to Mary in Courtney. Hi, Mary. Thank you, Judy, for doing this case and looking into this. You're really getting to the core of the thing. I have been studying how to get access to my grandchildren for the past four years, one month, and 16 days. Where are they right I, now? They're uh, not a half a mile from my house, and I haven't been able to see them. Uh, this is coming up to the fifth Christmas. Wow. Are, are they in the care of the government? or are they No, they're not in the care of the government, okay. but I can see it would be a, an absolute nightmare if they were. Right. I want to highlight what lawyers will not tell grandparents, and, okay. and uh, this is not a Supreme Court case. If there's a marriage, there's a su Supreme Court case. Right. But uh, there's probably thousands of us that are caught in family court because it was a common law marriage. Right. And we're going to family court, and your lawyers say, oh, yes, you've got a good chance, come on to court. And you go to court, and you pay $2,000 for a simple little access agreement in court right. that cannot be enforced, right. and you're highlighting that. Okay. Um, a lawyer, Georgia Lee Lang in, of Ladner Downs in Vancouver, has done a paper on it, how to get your client the access the court has ordered. And right. the, in the summary on her last page is... Uh, there is no police enforcement. It is a waste of time to go to court. I would urge all parents and grandparents to try to avoid going to court, yes, uh, try to get along as best they can because of the way the law stands now. Right. There is no enforcement, and you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars, right. and your nice lawyer won't tell you. Then you're no further ahead at the end of you're it. You're no further yeah. ahead if the parent okay. decides that she's not going to facilitate access. Uh, there's nothing you can do. The court, you can only go back to court. Right. And the, the, it's no wonder that the lawyers aren't behind this because the lawyers are making a fortune off of this. Okay, well, thank you for that. I'm going to let uh, Ken answer that, even though she's slagging you lawyers there, but <laughs> you probably agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ken, what do you have to say? I mean, before you got embroiled in this, did you think a court order would have any weight? Before I became embroiled in this system, I, I thought that the Canadian courts were fair just, even-handed, and, and respected the rights of all parties concerned who showed up and, and did, in family issues, what was best for the children. Uh, like your caller said, there's, it's simply not the case. Do you have an access order? Uh, uh, I have several orders that I'd prefer not to talk about. Oh, well, that's fine. But, uh, you don't talk about your case. No, what, what we find, though, is that, that fathers and grandparents at Christmas who have existing access orders simply can't exercise them without the willing cooperation of the custodial parent. So we're, we're finding ourselves asking, uh, w with this type of family issue, you have an access order, but it doesn't mean anything and nobody enforces it. Mm -hmm. And yet the other parent who has probably um, a maintenance order or a child support order, right. and that's enforced vigorously, and that's not fair. Sure, you can be paying out thousands of dollars a month, and you haven't seen your kid for a few years. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's talk to Regine now in Victoria. Hi, Regine. Hi, Judy. Hi. Thanks ahead. for le letting me talk. I'm, I'm a father of four desired children, and I'm available to spend some loving time with uh, them on Christmas, mm -hmm. except that the mother has sole custody, and she has used her sole custodial power to abrogate my... Uh, and over control my relationship with my children for years already. Right. And at Christmas, she usually tells me that it's the same access as all year long, which is once a weekend. Right. So I still don't know if I'm going to spend any proper time with my children for Christmas. Right. And I've also been involved with the dad's groups and the grandparents' groups. Right. And what's happening is that there's too many sole custodial parents that abuse their power as sole custodial parents. And... Um, Unfortunately, like the other people said, the, the setup is favored by the Attorney General and the legal system. Right. And we need the, the families to be taken out of the criminal jurisdiction because it's a yeah. fact also that the legal fees are another abuse on the children. 
because the parents and grandchildren that lose money is money that will never go to the children. Eh? Okay, I think that's an excellent point, actually. And Larry, bring you into this then. Um, it's true, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. and, uh, and it could go to the children. It ends up going into the system, to the lawyers, to, to mm -hmm. all the people. Um, is, is there a better way to do things? Like, why, why is it in the courts? Why isn't automatically mediation or binding arbitration where the people have to talk to each other? Well, w with respect to the Ministry of Children and Families, the reason it's in the courts is because the ministry has all of the power. Mm -hmm. And in order, for, uh, as I said before, a parent or, or, or a, a grandparent, for example, uh, in order to get uh, any rights at all, it will have to participate in the proceedings in court where the director is there obtaining an order of the court for either custody or an order that the child is in need of protection and that sort of thing. So that's why you, s you find yourself in that forum for that uh, type of case. In those cases where it's not a protection issue, but rather a Family Relations Act matter, right. uh, with ministry not involved, uh, there is, it seems to me, there's good reason why it shouldn't be in the court. Yeah, that it should never see a courtroom. If, yeah, it, if, if the issue is the best interest, interest of the children, why can't the parties sit down and work it out together? Mm -hmm. After all, we are talking about parents or grandparents. We're talking about people who have demonstrated they care for the children. Why can't they sit down together and work out a plan of care, mm -hmm. the best way to care for the children? And now, there was some, when Robert Metzger was on, he's the chief judge for BC, um, he had said that they're actually moving more and more to mediation, but it's only, it has to be voluntary. So actually, mm -hmm. if just one person wants to go to court, you both end up in court, and then, you, mm -hmm. and then all the costs are associated with that. That mm -hmm. seems to me to be part of the problem, is that as long as there's an option for one person mm -hmm. to be vengeful or do whatever, uh, then you both end up dragging. And it's always the kids who pay the price in the end yeah. if you go through the courts. That's true. Um, we'll take one more call quickly, and let's talk to uh, Nancy in Langley. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Judy. Hi. Thank you for bringing up this issue, and you have a terrific program, and I try not to miss it. Oh, thank you. And just keep up the good work. I agree with the um, reform MP that was on, um, and also we were back trying to get a grandparent's law with the justice system, as you might recall. Right, because you're with the uh, Grandparents Association. Yes, I'm the president and founder. Right. And um, they turned us down uh, right, left and center because I, we found out after being at the in the federal government at the justice system mm -hmm. that the majority of the people on the justice system had a law degree. Now, we know that some of the cases that have gone to court right across Canada have gone up to $50,000. Yeah. That's for grandparents' assets. Yeah. And I have not won. Right. Now, this is ridiculous that this, this has to go on. So and you're thinking that there, there are not likely to be any federal changes that allow for granted? Well, we were handed the, <laughs> how are you going to say, be tossed around in the clouds. Yeah. The federal told us that provincial had to do it. Mm -hmm. Provincial said that the federal had to do it. Now, Linda Reed, um, the liberal uh, for uh, MP for, uh, or MLA for East, Richmond, yeah. Richmond East, mm -hmm. has presented, uh, unfortunately, it had to be a, a member's bill, you know, mm -hmm. but I believe that we are getting somewhere with this now. Oh, and that's coming up in the spring session? I believe so, okay. yes. I believe she had an appointment with the Attorney General on the 12th, and I'm just waiting to hear about this. Oh, well, good. Well, we'll have to watch that then. And right. See if but, you know, so. we also help support the whole family now. It's gotten to a big issue. Right. It's the fathers come to us, the mothers come to us, and uh, because the grandparents are involved. Sure, oh, they should be. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, for, oh, sorry, Mary, we have to take a break. We're over time. And uh, we will, just before we go to the break, tell you how you can get more information or how you can send your your complaints because Chief Judge Robert Metzger said he wants to hear from you. You can write to Suite 501, 700 West Georgia Street, Box 10287, Pacific Center, Vancouver, BC. That's a V7Y1E8. And as I say, he says it's your system. You can help complain about it. And uh, we're certainly going to talk about this a bit more. We'll be back after a quick break. <laughs> song is a celebration of love. When I need you, now get Touched by Love, a new 36-song collection of the most popular soft rock hits. Darling, if you want me to be closer to you, get closer to me.
magic of love in every song. Sometimes when we touch, the honesty's too much. Touched by Love brings you 36 of the most romantic songs of our time. by love is not sold in stores so order now just call this toll free number now for touched by love two cassettes 1998 two CDs 2698 plus 495 shipping call now our question of the day today do you know of anyone who has trouble getting to see their kids at Christmas and what's their situation? Here's sort of a variety of responses. Sometimes you feel like you get caught in the middle, but for the kids, you just, you know, just, uh, my advice would be uh, when, you're, when you're working it out, just don't do it in front of the kids. Yeah. Just work something out, stick by it, and do it that way. I think it's sad if you can't have your children, uh, whether you're the mother or the father. I, I think it's okay. I mean, it all depends on the child and the adult, so. But uh, I like... I feel comfortable with the idea because I'm used to it, but uh, how others would feel, it all depends on the child, right? And we're going to go back to the phones, and we're going to start with Amanda from Abbotsford. Amanda, is this with Amanda Sinclair? Yes, it is, Judy. Okay, well, we haven't heard from you for a while. No, I'm still around here. This just about cost me my health fighting this. Okay, now I should let people know then, in your case, you have a granddaughter who was apprehended when her mother died. And, uh, no, her mom's still alive, but her dad's uh, dead. Okay, well, the mother is very sick then. Yes, yeah, she is. Okay, so, and, and what was the status of your granddaughter? Okay, my granddaughter, um, she, uh, the both parents wrote to the ministry requesting that I raise my granddaughter. Right. And it's been a nightmare ever since. Mm -hmm. um, that's from the time she was very young. Right from the time of birth, right. And she's and, uh, old, about six now? She's eight now. Eight, oh, well, I haven't heard from you for a while, I guess. I haven't <laughs> seen her since she was six and a half years old. Okay. Uh, I fought, uh, you know, for her extensively. Okay. And um, it went, you know, the ministry, you know, talk about the best interest of the child. One law states that in the child's best interest, if a child has got a bonding with a natural family member, you're not allowed to break it. Right. Well, the ministry just went right over that and disobeyed their own laws. They wrote the laws, but then they, they break them. I went to court, and uh, the judge gra granted the um, adoption even before court started that morning. He wouldn't listen to any of our evidence. Right. Nancy Woolridge was there. Nancy uh, uh, supervised some of the visits. The ministry lied. We uh, were able to prove a lot of lies. Mm -hmm. We had pictures and everything showing uh, lies and everything, and the judge wouldn't even listen to it. Um, it's not right that the welfare can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. um, I have a letter from Joan Smallwood saying that, you know, even as adoption went through, I would still maintain my grandparents' rights. Right. And then Bernd Walters came in, and he says, I don't care what Joan Smallwood wrote. I'm the ministry now, and I say, you have your last visit, and that was the bottom of it. And I wasn't allowed to say goodbye to her. I wasn't allowed to let her know that Granny wasn't coming back. Nothing. Right. And I, all I can ever remember is a little girl saying, Granny, why can't I visit you? Well, Granny, why can't I come and see you? Right. You know, and uh, I'm not allowed to see her or talk to her ever again. Okay, Amanda, I, I mean, your case is so sad, and I, I know that you were fighting for years. Um, in a case like that, Larry, I mean... I mean, how do you even? Uh, she's not the only one either. There are all kinds of grandparents out there who end mm -hmm. up losing their ch their grandchildren to the ministry. It, it's a really sad situation, and I think in in large part it's rooted in the way in which the the law is written, 
uh, as I mentioned before, the, the courts are powerless. I, I, I sometimes refer to it as a, a situation of impotence because you go to court and you try to demonstrate to the court that the best interests of the ch children lie in being with a family member. Mm -hmm. and, and what the court says was, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gilbert, but we can't listen to that argument because uh, the, we don't have any power to order the, the director to give uh, access to the parent. Because that's the director's discretion? That's right. Not wow. until a continuing care order is, is issued can the court consider an application for access. But uh, the problem is bigger than that. Uh, I, I look at it this way. If, if you look at the statistics, how many children have died? How many children have suffered while they're in their care of the ministry? Mm -hmm. I mean, if the ministry was a natural person who was a parent, who would apprehend the children well, yeah, from them? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I think that's I mean. an excellent point. Let's talk to Alice in Vancouver. Hi, Alice. Alice, I'm going to uh, refer to the last Amanda. Yes. Uh, my case was very similar. Okay. But this happened many years ago, so it's not a new thing. So I think if the, uh, the ones that are coming up along better fight hard, because right. I didn't see my grandson until he was for 30 years and then we found him wow and he didn't know us he had no family background right. he had nothing is it is everything better now well no not really because he's a stranger now right okay and so in that case that uh, we had we were rough shot over yeah. just like Amanda has been yeah and I feel for her and I'm very sorry for her, but she better try and fight more okay. before that child gets much older Okay, well, thank you very much for that, Alice. Um, I'm going to take another call right away, too, because that was for Amanda. Let's talk to Patrick in Victoria. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Hi How Dave. are you, Judy? Fine, thanks. Merry Christmas. And to you? Um, try not to make this too long a story. Uh, a couple of years ago, when uh, I uh, lost custody of my daughter, mm -hmm. when we had separated, uh, I had a, a regular access, a general access, actually, and I didn't see my daughter for six months, so I finally fought for a specified access. Mm -hmm. I got that. She followed the access for about six weeks. And then for the following next six months, she denied me access. I had police at her door. Every time I had access, I set them up two hours in advance so the police would be there. Mm -hmm. And still she refused. And, and not once was she ever charged with um, disobeying a court order. Right. You know, and um, to me, when a court order is made, especially in specified access, the cop should be able to apprehend the mother and or the father, whichever the case may be, mm -hmm. and uh, lay charges on them. And it just doesn't happen, and it's very unfortunate. It almost makes going to court to get a specified access, access a waste of time. Yeah, well, um, I think, yeah. Since then, I have won custody. Mm -hmm. I, I you know, won custody? Yes, I have. I'm a single father. Um, I fought for two years, and I finally did finally win. The judge finally realized like I was truthful and everything, and uh, he picked my side finally. Right. I mean, they kept giving her back. My daughter came to me with with injuries on several occasions, but they kept giving her back to her. Right. And uh, now she's a happy girl. She's doing fine. Um, I tried to set up two months ago for Christmas access with the grandparents on 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 my daughter's mother's side. Right. They were supposed to be in touch by December first. It's a week before Christmas. I still not have heard a word from them. Right. Um, specified court order that I have <clears throat> gives uh, visitation this Christmas to her mother. Right. And I have not heard from her mother, not heard from anybody in her family. Okay. Um, her mother hasn't actually even seen her since Easter. Wow. You okay. know? I, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off there because I'd like Ken to respond to that. I mean, in that case, of course, he went the full... 360, sure. right? Because he started off with a frustrated access. I guess you hear um, similar stories like that, but what is it that the custodial parent is trying to accomplish by not letting the children see the other parent? I think mostly it's a question of uh, a certain amount of power and control. We find <coughs> that, that people will do just about anything to see the children, to have the children with them, whether it's a question of money or whatever. They will do what they can do, and this business of taking children away from one parent, I think, is fundamentally wrong. Sometimes it seems like there's fear involved, though, too. I mean, I've seen some cases where custodial parents have been afraid uh, that the non-custodial parent will abduct them or will, you know, uh, do something that's not healthy. But I've seen that come across in court documents, too. We, we see all sorts of accusations of that sort of thing, but very little evidence of it. Yeah, okay. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take more of your calls. We're talking about access over Christmas. <laughs> Call 
to order Roger's Me TV now and you could win a trip to historic England. I'm so into history. Or one of 10 Sony home theaters. There's over $300,000 in prizes, including a grand prize of 50,000. The earlier you enter, the more chances to win. And with 16 channels for as little as $5.99, you can't lose. Order Me TV today to win. Call 1-888-ROGERS-1. Jumbo Metrics by Con Air, the ultimate styling tool for every new fashion trend in hair. With enough attachments to crimp, straighten, and curl, including a brush for softer effect or a smoother look, it's a mini salon in one. America, millions of you have skinny hair. Stop hiding it. From Conair Volume Control, you've got the Big Curl Setter. Five soft surface jumbo rollers with super clips go from skinny to full of body. Nobody's bigger in hair than Conair. Some days are made to last forever. Beautiful from Estee Lauder. Now, red for the holidays. A bright red toad in brilliant lip color. $22.50 with any Estee Lauder fragrance purchase. This holiday offer is now at Eaton's. and company. Everything you'll want to stay home with. And we're talking about access over Christmas and we'll go straight back to the phones and we'll start with Randall in Crofton. Hi Randall. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I know that I've uh, suffered and my little girl have suffered with our access and I know that the RCMP can't do anything if... Uh, custodial parent says no. Right. Um, my problem was with this uh, female judge in court there. Um, I brought my ex uh, before the courts time and time again for not complying with my court-ordered access. Right. Through process, I also had uh, applications for interim full custody. The judges that were listening to this all the time gave me my daughter uh, 12 days of the month. You know, and that was a lot more access than a lot of fathers get even before the hearing. Sure. Uh, this female judge who is recently in the paper in Victoria took away my access, and uh, she allowed uh, affidavit to be submissible evidence when it's not. And um, even though I had witnesses that are a very good statue, uh, she didn't take them into consideration at all. Okay, you know, so my, I haven't I've seen my daughter once in a year, and I've appealed the decision last January, and it still hasn't come to uh, light yet. Okay, well, uh, thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, Larry, that's uh, another part of it, too, is that there's an arbitrariness to the court system, but it's also clogged, pretty mm -hmm. seriously clogged right now. Yeah, very much so. It, it raises an issue, too. I mean, the courts say that they're interested in the best interest of the children, but how, how can it be in the best interest of the children if you're bringing on a custody application or an access application uh, because you want to be with the children, you need to be with the children, and the children need to be with the parent or with the extended family. How can you say it's the best interest of the children if you set the trial a year down the road? Yeah, so where the the the, he could put them in a freezer or something, you know. Yeah. Like, what is that? You can't suddenly say, okay, don't grow for the next year and put your life yeah. on hold. Well, plus, how, how can it possibly be in the best interest of any child to, to take away one of their parents, to basically sever that parental bond between parent and children arbitrarily without cause? Unless there's some serious can't problem. Be. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk to Juanita in Victoria. Hi, Juanita. Um, hi. hi. I was wondering about, um... I was wondering, I'm <laughs> sorry, um, I was wondering about something that I can go get about to seeing about my daughter. Right. My parents are looking after her, but um, they were, we're supposed to see her twice a week, but we can't see her mm -hmm. because my dad says he can't bring her over and stuff. I mean, legally, she's supposed to be here twice a week, but I've only seen her five times to six times in a year. So in, in that case, there's an access order, is that what you're saying? Um, or no, is this an he's agreement? supposed to bring her here, but he doesn't. Okay. And my daughter is always asking, 
Yes, Tony. <laughs> my daughter's always asking to uh, see her, right. too, and he says he'll bring her over, and she gets all si- excited, and mm-hmm. he doesn't bring her over, but I was wondering how I can do it without hurting him. Okay, well, I think that's a, an important question. Um, th- there's also, there's family court counselors you can go to uh, without cost who might be able to help in a situation like that, aren't there? Well, I, I don't think the family court counselors can help to bring about an access uh, or uh, bring about exercising access. W- what family court counselors will often do is, is provide an assessment of, of the custody issue or the access issue and a report to court. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes they will help uh, the parties to mediate uh, a solution to the, to the problem. Rarely. Yeah. Uh, but, I'm just uh, wondering, in a case like that, too, um, you know, if you've got family members who are taking care of a child, is there any way to bring them together? I guess there's a, not unless they both want to. That's right. Uh, there has to, it has to be a willingness to work together in the best interest of the children. Yeah, that's a, a strange situation. You'd figure everybody would want to, but that doesn't always the case. Um, mm. Let's talk to Valerie now in Vancouver. Hi, Valerie. Oh, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for hearing me. Um, uh, I've been listening, and um, I, I agree. I think there is a need for specialized medita- uh, mediation. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the family court counselors, uh, they are understaffed, and they have uh, sort of uh, uh, have time constraints, mm-hmm. and their, their focus isn't particularly, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what each family needs. So we... The province and people need uh, mediators who are who really understand children. Okay. Um, that's that's the first thing. Um, I I hear over and over and over that uh, the blame is always directed towards the custodial parent, mm-hmm. and I uh, often it is I'm sure. Um, but but I want to bring out how the children feel in these situations uh, from you know we raise our children from a very early age to have strong self-esteem and to be able to make good wise decisions to protect themselves right and all of a sudden they're faced with a family breakdown and a divorce and like in my case it happened and uh, then there was two and a half three years of no child support and another big battle right um, my child, by the time she was eight and nine and ten years old, had very strong feelings herself. Right. And so access visits have, you know, they did become a problem. Right. And personally, I, I sort of try and keep myself in the middle of all this mess and not get, you know, I don't want to tell my daughter what to do. I don't want to tell my ex-husband what to do. I just want to mm-hmm. let them resolve it. Okay, but, uh, but, um, we're kind of over time for a break. I'm sorry, I have to cut you off there, but I think you made some excellent points about how the children so often get caught in the middle, and they do develop very strong opinions on the way things are going. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that will, doesn't matter what the court order says, if the child has made up their mind at mm-hmm. a certain point. They become the prize and the weapon in the court system, and that's wrong. Yeah, I think what she was saying, though, too, is that in a case, if there were a couple of years of really bad feelings, if there's no child support payments coming in, for example, not in the case where someone's participating, where someone's turning their back on it, then the child will obviously, you know, harbor mm-hmm. those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more of your calls. And we'll talk about- <laughs> Exotica Eyewear. What do you want people to see? I want you to see a student and a teacher. I want you to see how beautiful the word mom can sound. See refinement. I want you to see how silly I'd feel in rhinestones. I want you to see the older I get, the smarter my dad gets. I want you to see a great looking guy. (laughs) I'd like you to see me. Luxottica Eyewear. Let them see you. To find Luxottica Eyewear, call 1 888 Luxottica. How can you give someone a taste of something this refreshing, this cool, this holiday season? Give a Brita water filter system. It's a really cool gift. Some days, 
are made to last forever. Beautiful from Estee Lauder. Now, red for the holidays. A bright red toad in brilliant lip color. $22.50 with any Estee Lauder fragrance purchase. This holiday offer is now at Eaton's. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's a new addition to the family. Oh, just beautiful. Got ABS oh. brakes. Easier access than ever. Side door impact beams. 40 standard safety features, and it's got a five-star rating and front-end crash test. And right now, Windstar comes with an all-star deal with our new 98 model at only $249 a month, but only at your BC Ford and Mercury dealer and only for a limited time. And how about that gorgeous little baby? He likes it, too. The Remax Home Tour is on the air. All week, the Remax Mobile Production Studio tours Vancouver Island, videotaping a cross-section of the finest properties listed for sale. Watch the Remax Home Tour Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. It's here on Check TV, Vancouver Island's Home Tour. And coming up tomorrow, a program on cloning with Bishop Remy Drew and the Dean of Genetics from UBC. That should be interesting. Then on Thursday, we'll talk about street violence and recent incidents. And on Friday, the commercialization of Christmas, a topic that was actually brought up by a couple of the callers last week. And we'll go straight back to the phones, finish up and talk to uh, Avi, Avi from Victoria. Hello, good Hi. afternoon. Thank you, uh, Jolie, for taking care of uh, putting all this at the frontiers of uh, people's consciousness. Right. I'd like to mention a few things. One, a family does not end with divorce, and its functions such as parenting continues right. way beyond into the future. And another thing is that Canada, federal and provincial governments need to enhance the divorce act with principles, provisions, and guidelines that will establish mandatory mediation mm -hmm. and conflict resolution. Right. And they are responsible for doing that, and they cannot avoid taking responsibility, and we will hold them accountable until they will do that. Okay, I think that's an, an excellent point, actually, that uh, there are solutions out there. Um, do you see more sign that mediation is becoming an option, that the courts don't want to hear it first? Yes, uh, I, I think the Attorney General is moving in that direction. There, there's a, a quite a bit of movement. Uh, I saw a document recently where they were surveying mediators on, on how they would participate and under what sort of rules uh, they would uh, apply. And, and th those are, are with respect to um, civil matters. Right, and, and, like and not criminal law. That's well, the right. difficulty in this area with mediation, of course, is that mediation works well if you have two people mediating from a position of relative equality. But when you have a situation where one parent can end up with complete, con complete custody and one parent can end up with none, there's a risk to mediating. There's a risk that the other may take you to court first and gain sole custody. Right. Well, as long as the court's the back door, then it becomes a no problem. Yeah. Okay, let's talk to Sally now in Aldergrove. Hi, Sally. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, I'm married to a gentleman who is, uh, has two children by his first marriage. Right. He had adopted one of these children because she had been, his wife had been married before. Okay. Uh, the children are older now. They're divorced. And my husband... He pays his support every month. He's forced to. Uh, he's never been allowed access. He has to fight for it. And every time he's been going back to court to, to get the access, he's been forced to pay more support. Wow. Now, the um, birth father of the oldest boy is uh, this, the oldest boy is spending all, flies out to Alberta all the time to see his birth father. Right. Yet to have a, a weekend with these, his son and his daughter is almost an impossibility. He spent one weekend with them in the past two and a half years. Wow. The daughter is not allowed to come over here. She, they live in Victoria because she's not allowed to go unsupervised with, a, with the brother across on the ferry. How old is she? She turned 13 on Saturday. Mm -hmm. However, on the other hand, she was allowed to go up island to Nanaimo by herself on the, on the um, what do they call that, the dayliner? Right. Uh, by herself last summer at, at okay. the same period of time when she was the, the mother refused access. It is terribly frustrating for my husband. He's been to court numerous times. Yeah. It's just a matter of now he said, well, I can't do anymore. Yeah. The court system has stymied me. Every time I turn around, I'm slapped in the face. Okay. Now with the new law changes, yeah. he's been forced to sign a paper saying that he can't claim <coughs> the taxes anymore. Right. And, so now and he's still not getting access. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, Ken, that raises the issue of step parents as well. Many step parents get very much, you know, wrapped up in it. They have a lot of love for the kids. They have absolutely no right or voice in any of this. But yeah, there's a perception that it's it's almost exclusively sort of fathers who who have done something wrong. But there's step parents, and there's there's even not even 
step parents as people uh, say you simply live together for a while. You, you, the courts view you as undertaking some sort of long-term, ongoing responsibility for having done that. So you have to be very careful. I mean, it, it makes the situation very risky for a couple who'd like to, say, try living together for a while if there's any children involved, because you take a huge risk. And, and it's terrible to actually think of human relationships in those terms. Larry, any predictions for the future? I mean, hopefully this time next Christmas, maybe there'll be some good news. If they establish a mediation uh, model uh, to deal with the issue of family problems, custody and access, then I think we are going to see improvement. I think that's essential. They'd have to pull the Ministry of Children and Families into that process too. Uh, that I think is, is, uh, is under consideration. I, don't, I can't really speak to that issue, but I believe that is under consideration. That's okay. certainly, uh, yeah, that would certainly help. Okay, well, I want to thank you both because we're out of time for the talking force and the lines are still jammed, so thank okay. you both for thank joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. That's great. And if you'd like to contact us, this is how you can do it. You can write to Tyabji at 780 Kings Road, Victoria, B.C., V8T 5A2, fax us at 250-389-1226, or email us at tyabji at wic.ca. And our internet website has information from this and other shows, and I'm actually almost completely caught up with my mail, so you can start writing to me again and you'll get a fairly quick response. We'll be right back. Here comes Christmas when wishes come true I'm feeling romantic and thinking of you This Christmas, romance is in the air at Sears Show her how much you love her with fragrance essentials from Oscar de la Renta and receive this very special holiday gift with your purchase of $55 or more. It's your Christmas wish store. Come see the merry side of sea. There's a new kind of space travel engineered for shipping non-hazardous liquids in a new form of energy-saving container. One that holds five times the volume of steel drums and takes 20% less shipping space. A corrugated container that is so efficient, it not only uses recycled fiber, it is recyclable, reusable, and biodegradable. Spacecraft, another innovation by Macmillan Bladell, making the most of a renewable resource. Dedication to bringing you the best is a year-round commitment to Thrifty Foods. It's what makes Thrifty Foods special. This December, as we gather with family and friends in celebration, watch for these small in the aisle features on your favorite name brand products. They're what you've come to expect. Thrifty Foods, your homegrown holiday food store. Season's greetings from Thrifty Foods. Thrifty Foods. Minnie's Christmas party was the most wonderful social event of the season. Why? Even I was invited. This Christmas, gather the family for an enjoyable evening at Minnie's house and watch Disneyland Presents Mickey's Nutcracker. You'll see Minnie, Mickey, and their lovable Disney friends enjoying Christmas together on Family Channel. Happy Holidays! Cloning is something that's making advances in the laboratory, but many people believe an ethical debate over cloning is long overdue. And even though we had a Royal Commission on Reproductive Technology, there are no laws in place now that affect cloning. We'll talk about this tomorrow. And today we talked about a very important issue, access at Christmas time, but it becomes a bigger issue than that. It's not just access at Christmas for parents and grandparents and relatives. It's the issue of how do we treat each other as human beings so that the best interests of the children are safeguarded. When we first launched this show several months ago, we looked at this a number of times to show some of the problems in the system. The good news is there seems to be a recognition in the decision makers that changes have to come. It's coming way too slowly and we'll have to keep revisiting this issue to make it better. I'm Judy Tayabji and that's my opinion. What's yours? <laughs> <laughs>